So welcome back to the videos, welcome to another beautiful morning in Spain. Today's ride is a little bit shorter, so as we've got a nice chilled day, I thought it would be a good opportunity to go through my bike setup. So without further ado, here is a weird bike packing setup, an aero bike with bags on it and one bike. So to start things off, this is my Scott Foil aero bike. And yes, I'm bike packing on it because you can bike pack on any bike. There are no rules. This is a Scott Foil 20 frame set in size small. I've done a full video on this bike without the bags and stuff on it. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description down below. This is a fairly new bike and there are a few notable things worth mentioning in this bike packing video, which will be affecting this trip. Firstly, it's got a hydraulic rotor one by group set on it because in the cycling industry right now, there are a few shortages of parts uh, and it was the only thing I could get hold of. But so far, it's been fantastic. On the front, I've got a 42 tooth chainring and on the back, an 1136 cassette. There's been a fair amount of climbing on this trip so far and it seems to be just about right until you go over about 15% where it is a bit of a drag, uh, but perfectly doable still. Wheels are parkour rondas. These are their all road style wheels. So slightly wider internal diameter fitted with 30 millimeter tires. So a comfortable ride, which kind of offsets the fairly aggressive frame. Rotor disc brakes, which are made in collaboration with Magura. These are 160 rotors front and rear. So massive rotors, really, really strong braking performance, which I'm very happy with and very important, especially when you have lots of bags on your bike, weighing it down. In terms of bag setup, I have a small Atticus bar bag with tools inside of it. I have all my tools in one place in a tool roll like this. So this has got chain breaker, Allen keys, puncher patches, tubeless stuff. I'm running these tubeless, so there's like darts in here if I need to fix them and inner tubes in the front bag as well if the tubeless fails. I also keep stuff that I need regularly in here like passport every time you book into a hotel. Having these things on hand and easy to find makes a big difference. Ooh, amazing recent upgrade to my setup has been this small speaker. I think it's called a JBL clip because it has a clip on it but it's really loud and it means we can listen to music while we're riding along uh we tend to pause it when we go through towns and stuff though because you don't want to disturb people i then have stuffed into the pockets on the other side bits of food so these are cashew nuts and then two stem bags or food pouches which are attached to the uh handlebars probably the neatest that i've ever done it you can see there more food these are sweets and phone on the left hand side and then i've got my grill mount with the GoPro for filming these videos. And yes, this is how I get all the footage of me descending. Yeah, ridiculous. But Chris has got one too, so it makes me feel less silly. Mounted to the frame, I have two magnetic Fidlock bottles. These are 600 milliliters. Uh, I tend to refill them in the morning and then usually I'm good for the whole ride, except for the really long days. Tiny little Lazain pump, which does the trick. I would prefer my full frame pump, but it doesn't fit that neatly inside the aero frame. After all, this is not made for bike packing. Welcome to this very quick commercial break. This is a message to say that we're actually giving away a very good prize in today's video. And all you have to do is comment below as to why you think you should win it. The prize is a Garmin 830. Just like this one, except your one will be in a box and brand new. Comment below why you should win. And thank you to Garmin for sponsoring this video. Now back to the bike check. Pedals, I'm using my Garmin Rallies. These are the SPD SL versions. These ones are double-sided power meters and work with your standard Shimano SPD SL cleats, which is what's on the bottom of my shoe. I really like having the power data when I'm riding a loaded bike because it's easy to get carried away when you're on climbs because you are going so much slower. Without seeing the data in front of you, you can get a bit frustrated because you are going so slow and then you ride too hard and then before you know it, you've been doing sweet spot for like half an hour up the climbs. So I really like having the data in front of me, looking at my power, knowing what my zone two power is, which I can sustain for a long time and then just sticking to that. In addition to that data, I've also got Garmin Phoenix watch, which gives you your heart rate data as well and loads more information about sleep and recovery as well. Uh, so I've been wearing this the whole time on the trip and it'll be interesting to see how like your body battery drains. There's also solar panels on the watch face which uh, extend the battery life which well don't often get used in the UK but when you're here extra battery. This is a Syncross Belcara saddle. This is a short nose saddle with a nice big cutout in the middle and I've actually been getting on with it really well. This is the saddle that came with the Scott frame. On the back of the bike I've got loads and loads of stuff. A lot more than Chris. I've been carrying his iPad. That's why he's so much faster than me this trip. As usual, I'm running a carbon tail fin rack. So this is comprised of two struts, which attach to any 
quick release or through axle, any bike. And then it also fastens to your seat post there. You can get different ones if you've got an aero seat post. Uh, one little change that I've made, which is new this trip, is this seat post extender. So this little stick here is longer. You can buy that attachment separately. And then the top bag sits further back. So you can actually unroll it completely without taking it off the bike, which is really useful if you're bike packing and you're not too fussed about it all being super neat underneath your saddle, you can just access your stuff better. And um, James was using it when we were in Vietnam, really loved it, and uh, I've copied him because convenience. On the tail fin rack, I've got two pannier style bags fitting on the sides, they're about 20 liters each, and then the aero pack, which is the top one, which is also about 20 liters, so loads and loads of room. Obviously I'm carrying a lot of camera gear, so in here I've got just my laptop, and then a bunch of cable salad, so all the chargers and everything, and then my normal clothes. In the other side, I have cycling clothes, including some clean kit, when I eventually join Team Ribble at the end of this bikepacking trip. Chris's iPad, and then some sweets and stuff, which I'm carrying, just in case we end up stuck for food, which can happen on a Sunday in Spain, because everything's closed. In the aero pack, I've got normal shoes, a few extra normal clothes, and a down jacket as well, which packs down really small. On the back of the tail fin, I've been running a Garmin Varia radar. This is not only a really strong backlight, which is rechargeable, but also tells you when a car is coming up behind you. So when I'm on quieter roads, I've got this running, and then I get an alert on my head unit when there's stuff coming up behind. When you're very tired, it's very useful to have that information. I've had people ask me before how I mount this to the tail fin. I don't actually have the special fitting that they sell. I just use the normal Garmin one that comes in the box uh, with the elastic bands and loop it around the strap. It does wobble around slightly, but uh, it's never been at risk of coming off. Then also have clipped on this nifty device, which is a Garmin InReach Mini. Now this is a new bit of kit and it has to be on the outside of your gear to work because it basically needs to see the sky it's a satellite tracker, which with a Garmin subscription, you can also send and receive messages from people when you don't have any phone signal whatsoever. I'm gonna flash up some pictures on the screen here of what the messaging looks like, because I've actually been messaging Daisy through it to test it out, because we've been without phone signal in some of these national parks around here. The other nice thing is that it tracks your position the whole time it's running, and the battery, well, I've had it on for three days now, and we're still at 80%. Once you've set it up, you can send links to as many people as you want, and when they click that link, they'll be able to see where you are in the world. And they can see a map of where you've been as well, and how long it was since you were in that position. There are loads of settings to tinker with. You can actually change the intervals that it relays your position. So if you're going somewhere high risk and you want it to show your position more frequently, uh, then you can adjust that. So there's a lot of settings to tinker with. I'll let you know how it goes in the next few weeks. One more thing about the InReach Mini there is an SOS button underneath this cap. If you press that button anywhere in the world, then the local authorities will be alerted and they'll come and rescue you. Chris, should we press the SOS button for the video? We've got to show it as an example. Last but not least, we are navigating using Garmin head units. This is a cool trick and I've actually done something new here where on, from, from the home screen, I can go onto the Komoot app. So this actually runs apps and Komoot is where we've planned all of our routes. So I can select one and literally download it straight from the device, as long as it's connected to my phone. It's always good having a separate device from your phone to do the navigation because, well, it, it's kind of like having a backup. Um, so you're draining the battery on this instead of your phone, which you might be relying on for other stuff during a bike packing trip. Now that pretty much sums things up. So now we've done the bike check thing. This is actually a normal video as well. Welcome to day three. We have now got 10k left of our ride. <laughs> it's been pretty uneventful. We've just cruised along the coast through another national park. Yeah, another real nice climb that we did. Everything's been steady. Everything's been good. It's been hot. And they've also been laughed at for only wearing jersey and shorts by the people uh, in the cafes because it's winter here apparently. Legs feeling good. Chris feeling happy. Good times. <laughs> oh, Chris, how long did we spend looking for a white wall to uh, to Half do my bike day. check today. Half of the day. Literally, well. <laughs> the hotel was <laughs> These towns are really nice. On the coast, but a bit less touristy. Near Najar, which is on the Badlands route. Every time you mention Badlands, you're getting that. It's like Carly. <laughs>